Hi everyone, thanks for clicking and welcome back to my channel, where we talk all about aviation related topics, including ground school subjects. Today we are going to be talking about TAFs. What is a TAF? What does it contain? How long is it valid for? How to easily decode and read a TF? And last but not least, we will look at some practical examples in order to put what we will have learned into practice. Again, and as usual, we are only going to cover the things that concern us pilots, the key points that we need in our daily life as pilots. So without any further ado, let's get started. TAF is an acronym for Terminal Aerodrome Forecast. A Terminal Aerodrome Forecast is a forecast established for the five nautical mile radius around an airport. TFs are usually given for larger airports. Each TAF is valid for a 24 hour time period and is updated four times a day at 0000 Zulu, 0600 Zulu, 1200 Zulu, and 1800 Zulu. The TF utilizes the same descriptors and abbreviations as used in the meta report. Unlike METARs, and because of the validity of TAFs, can be up to 24 or sometimes 30 hours, temperature and QNH are not provided in the TAF. The reason for that is, quote, obvious, simply because during the long validity of the forecast, QNH and temperature can vary. So let's look at this TF right here. First things first, TF refers to the type of the report or forecast. The second group is the airport ICAO identifier. Gulf Mike Tango Tango is the ICAO code for Tangiers International Airport. Next, we have the date and time at which this TAF was issued. So this TAF was issued on the sixth of the month at 1100 UTC. Moving on to the fourth group, we have the validity. This TAF is valid from the 12 o'clock, that is noon, of the 6th of the month all the way until 18 o'clock, that is 6 p.m. Remember that all times are in UTC. So basically, this is a 30-hour TAF. All right, the fifth group, we have the average wind direction in relation to true north and speed in knots. In this example, the wind is blowing from 300 degrees at 6 knots. Next is the visibility group. 9,999 is denoted when the visibility is 10 kilometers or more. We will look at another example where RVR is reported instead of visibility. Moving on to the cloud group. In this example, we have a few clouds at 2600, broken clouds at 23000 feet above ground level. Here's what few clouds look like, and here's what broken clouds look like. It's worth covering also scattered as well as overcast. This table will help you better understand when each type of clouds is used and why. Now, this is the part where most student pilots struggle with. Becoming. The becoming group in a TAF describes a gradual change which will take place over a prolonged period of time, but will be the prevailing weather once that change is complete. The time period described in the TAF is the beginning and ending hour, during which the gradual change is forecast to be in progress. At the end of the described time, the change is expected to be complete, and the forecast weather should be the prevailing weather thereafter. Meaning, a gradual change will take place between 23 o'clock UTC of the 6th of the month and will end the next day, the 7th of the month, at 1 o'clock UTC. Now, what kind of gradual change are we talking about here? Well, it's a wind change. It will change to variable at two knots. Here's an important note. What does variable mean? Well, it basically could mean one of the, these two, one. When the total variation is 60 degrees or more and less than 180 degrees, and the wind speed is less than three knots, the wind direction shall be reported as variable with no mean wind direction, or two. When the total variation is 180 degree or more, the wind direction shall be reported as variable with no mean wind direction. Next up, probability of 40%, the probability group, prob 40, is used to forecast a low probability, 40% chance, of a thunderstorm or precipitation event and its associated weather and or obscuration elements. In this example, there is a 40% chance that between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. UTC on the same day, which is the 7th, the visibility will drop to 3,000 meters with mist. BR represent mist. Before we move on, do you guys know what is the difference between mist and fog? Keep watching as I will answer this question by the end of this video. For all obscurations that you may come across, whether on TAFs or METARs here, is a list of you may go ahead and take a screenshot or check the link in the description box. In the last line, we have another gradual change represented by another becoming. So between 5 a.m. UTC and 6 a.m. UTC again on the 7th of the month, the wind will become 190 at 8 knots. The visibility will prevail to 8,000 meters. NSC stands for no significant clouds. 
That is no CB, no TCU, no ceiling, or any type of convective clouds. Now let's have a look at the difference between mist and fog. The answer is quite simple. The difference lies within the density of the obscurity. Fog is defined as an obscurity in the surface layer of the atmosphere, which is caused by water droplets suspended in the air. Fog is reported when the visibility is less than one kilometers. Mist, on the other hand, is similar to fog, caused also by water droplets in the air. However, it is less dense than fog, usually reported when the obscurity of visibility is one kilometer or more. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of this swift video about TAFs. If you have any questions or suggestions, kindly leave them in the comment section below. Until next time, see ya.